Hello and welcome to eReels. This video is the first episode in our new series where we take an in-depth look at some of the qualifications needed by drivers, transport managers and other logistics staff in order to carry out their roles compliantly. In future episodes we'll be taking a deep dive into topics such as ADR and operator CPC, but we wanted to start by looking at driver CPC. This is the training most drivers are familiar with, as they need this qualification in order to drive professionally. It's fair to say that drivers know that they have to do driver CPC training, but why do they have to do it? In this episode, we'll examine driver CPC training in more detail, looking at where it originated from and the reason why it was brought in. We'll also look at the current status of driver CPC before considering what its future may be and how the training might change over the next few years. But let's begin by looking at the background to driver CPC. The idea of drivers needing to be qualified was introduced in 1985, but the legislation only applied to a small group of drivers and relatively few countries in the EU made that training compulsory. In July 2003, Directive 2003-59EC was brought in by the European Parliament, which stated that all new drivers were required to undertake initial training and needed to maintain their qualification by undergoing periodic training. The directive was adopted by the UK government in 2007 in the Vehicle Drivers Certificate of Professional Competence Regulations. The legislation set out details of drivers falling in scope of the regulations, exemptions from the training requirements, initial and periodic training, proof of training, and the subjects to be covered by the training providers. The main purpose of driver CPC is described in the legislation as follows. The obligation to hold an initial qualification and to undergo periodic training is intended to improve road safety and the safety of the driver, including during operations carried out by the driver while the vehicle is stopped. Under the regulations, all member states of the EU, including the UK at the time, were required to approve training providers and courses, and ensure that the provision of training was monitored. Both new and experienced drivers needed to partake in training, although this would differ depending on the driver's status. Proof of the driver's completion of their training could be shown either by issuing a separate driver qualification card or by recording code 95 on the driver's license. When the regulations were introduced, not everyone was required to undergo initial CPC training, as the legislation made provision for drivers if they held a category D1, D1E, D or DE entitlement on their license before the 10th of September 2008. Or if they held a category C1, C1E, C or CE entitlement on their license before the 10th of September 2009. In these cases, drivers would be able to undertake periodic CPC training instead. Periodic CPC training, as the name suggests, is carried out over a five-year period. It involves the driver attending 35 hours of training, which can be in a classroom or online. There are five modules, each seven hours in length, that a driver must undertake. Topics covered in these modules include driver's hours regulations, road safety and traffic law, walk-around checks, safe and fuel-efficient driving, and driver and workplace health and safety. Drivers are not required to pass a test to complete their training, although there are a few EU countries where it is compulsory. Ideally, drivers should spread their training over the five-year period so as to keep abreast of current legislation, and they must ensure that they do not repeat the same module twice unless there is a specific need to do so. The provision of training providers and driver attendance on training courses 
is monitored in the UK by the Joint Approvals Unit for Periodic Training, otherwise known as JORT. Drivers are responsible for keeping track of their periodic CPC hours, which they can do via the government website, and to make sure that they complete their 35 hours of training before the validity of their qualification card expires. However, it's also the responsibility of the driver's employers, the operator license holder, and the transport manager to ensure that their drivers are suitably qualified and hold a current driver qualification card, as it can have a serious impact on an operator's license and the good repute of those concerned. For those drivers who are looking to acquire their vocational entitlement, they undertake initial CPC training. This training runs alongside the theory and practical tests that are part of all driver license entitlements and is made up of two parts. Module 2, which is your case studies, where candidates are shown seven case studies designed to reflect situations that drivers will face in their day-to-day -day driving. There are a number of multiple choice questions for each case study. And module four, which is a practical demonstration. And this is also known as show me, tell me. As drivers are expected to explain and demonstrate their understanding of various topics, including safe loading of vehicles, walk round checks, and reducing the risk of clandestine entrance. Once a driver has passed their initial CPC, they must keep this qualification valid by attending periodic CPC training. After the completion of initial or periodic training, a driver qualification card is issued. This must be carried at all times when driving professionally, as a driver can be given a £50 fixed penalty if they're stopped by DVSA enforcement officers or the police and they do not have that card with them. Any lost or stolen cards must be replaced by contacting the DVSA, although drivers can continue to drive whilst waiting for the replacement to arrive. Not all drivers are required to undertake driver CPC training as they are exempt from the regulations. However, this is a short and specific list. That being drivers of vehicles with a maximum speed not exceeding 45 km per hour, vehicles under the control of the emergency services or the armed forces, drivers of vehicles undergoing road tests after repair or maintenance, the non-commercial carriage of passengers or goods for personal use, or vehicles used in a state of emergency or assigned to a rescue mission. As driver CPC was introduced through the European Parliament and adopted by the UK government, it was anticipated that after the UK withdrew from the EU, that the need to undertake driver CPC would be removed. However, as mentioned earlier, driver CPC was introduced to improve road safety and the safety of the driver. Therefore, leaving the EU made no difference to the requirement to meet this objective. In addition, the Vehicle Drivers Certificate of Professional Competence Amendment EU Exit Regulations 2018 amended the existing legislation to ensure that the driver CPC training requirement would remain in place after Brexit. In November 2021, the UK government announced that they wanted to review periodic CPC training with the aim of reducing driver shortages. Areas under discussion include looking at how driver CPC training could be delivered more flexibly, the training required for those who have not driven vocationally for a number of years, the inclusion of specific topics for drivers new to driver CPC, and how to reduce the financial burden of training on drivers. The outcome of that review is expected later in 2022. So what are your opinions of driver CPC? I'm sure you've got them. We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below, so please take the time to do so. Thank you for watching this episode. We hope that you've enjoyed it and found it interesting. As always, if you have, then please hit that like button and of course you can subscribe to our channel, which would make our day. If you want to receive notifications of new videos being dropped, then please ding that notification bell. 
We'll be back soon with another in-depth look at training, but until then, thank you and I'll see you on the next one.